In this video, we're gonna look at the new Google Calendar and Gmail integrations to Cloud Desktop. And then we're gonna talk about approaches to building better versions ourselves, or better yet, taking other people's versions and cloning them. Essentially get a better version that's able to send emails and delete emails and do a lot more. So let's go. Cloud Desktop has new connect apps button. Let's see what it is. Okay, this is awesome. Look at this, bring your everyday apps to Cloud. Google Drive, Google Calendar, Gmail. So one thing I noticed here is that Gmail can search and reference emails. So it doesn't look like they'll be able to send emails on our behalf, but let's just try that one out. So let's connect our Gmail. Okay, to authorize Gmail access. If you're authorized Cloud to access your Gmail messages, Cloud may use the data to respond to your prompts. So let's just try this out. What's the latest email I got? Okay, so cool. It's able to read my emails. Took a little bit longer than I expected. Basically what it did, it first read my profile, then it searched for messages. Then it read the most recent thread, which was from Zoom. And Zoom is telling me to sign up for Zoom Workplace Pro Plus. No, thank you. I do not want to sign up for another subscription. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's see what else it can do. Can you tell me what filters I have set up? This is interesting. So it can't tell me about the filters. It's pretty much telling me go to Gmail yourself and look at the filters. But to be honest, I'm pretty whelmed right here. I'm not overwhelmed. I'm not underwhelmed. It could search messages. It could read you messages. It can't send messages. It can't change filters. So anyways, going back to the from Gmail button, I think it's kind of lame. Google Calendar is also a new one. Let's just click this one. Let's try a calendar search. Okay, great. Now let's turn it on. Schedule a meeting for tomorrow at 2 p.m. I don't know if it's going to use the Google integration we just connected or my cal.com MCP server that I built, but we'll see. Okay, so it, it defaulted first to the calendar event. That's the actual meeting I have tomorrow. The title of the meeting is Get My Hair Cut. It will be with the Zohan. It should last 45 minutes and it will be virtual. Okay, so this is interesting. What happened here is first it tried to use my cal.com MCP server, and then it said, okay, I'll create this in Google Calendar. And then it went back to the MCP server that I built. So then it went back to Google Calendar and tried to do it in Google Calendar, but then it tried to book it with the MCP server. Okay, so the bottom line is it failed. It wasn't able to do it. It got confused with my cal.com MCP server with this calendar integration, but I'm pretty sure this Google Calendar cannot actually book appointments. So to be honest, I was pretty excited to see an official Google Calendar and Gmail integration built into Cloud Desktop. But after trying them out, I saw they're pretty limited, probably from a safety perspective. But if I have to go ahead and book or send emails by myself in Gmail, then I'd rather do that or just install or build my own MCP server. Use Brave Search and find me a Gmail MCP server or some type of MCP server that supports Gmail. And what we want to compare here is what an actual MCP server that supports Gmail can do. Okay, great. So now we use MCP servers, Brave Search and Tavili to look for other MCP servers that integrate Gmail. And let's just look at the features they mentioned. Gong Rose could send in draft emails, search emails, manage labels. Okay, so if I honest three MCP servers that connect Gmail and they all seem to do more than this official Gmail integration, on the one hand, I understand why they didn't build in the send emails into this integration because it is risky without anything malicious. LLMs hallucinate, they make some mistakes. And I have a feeling that Anthropic didn't want to build something that could send false emails, so that's why they limited it. These MCP servers look cool, but we would have to verify them. And I did a video recently on verifying and vetting MCP servers created by the community because you never know what's in there. You have to make sure there's no malicious code. And by the way, it's a continuous process because MCP servers that are hosted on package managers can be updated and then they could add new malicious code later. So you gotta be careful in installing other people's MCP servers. That's why I recommend building your own MCP servers or cloning an MCP server you see, checking it, and then making sure you run it locally so it's not getting the latest updates. Okay, so this is Gong Rose, or the one we saw before. It's 41 commits, 160 stars, 41 forks. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna take this URL and put it into our Claude project. MCP Evaluator V3, I'm just gonna paste this in and we're gonna let it do its work. And I'll put a link to the MCP Evaluator GitHub and video in the description below. So long story short, this MCP server got an 87 out of 100, which is pretty high. So I think this is pretty good. So I just wanna verify that this does not send data anywhere else. It doesn't have any malicious prompting. And then I wanna talk about forking this and running it locally so that it doesn't get updates. And the reason we don't want to get updates, at least automatic updates, is that we want to make sure that 
an update doesn't add some malicious code or prompt in there that could then work against us. And then we'll be able to update it manually if we want to. Server only communicates to Google's official API. Everything is stored locally. No prompting tricks or jailbreaks. No hidden API endpoints. Forking running locally to prevent automatic updates is a good approach. Here's how. So now we're gonna open up Cursor and we're gonna clone a repo. So to clone the repo, you just come here, you copy this, paste it in here. Let's open it up. Here's all the source code for this MCP server. By the way, if you didn't wanna use the Claude project that I set up to evaluate it, you could also prompt Cursor to look at all the code. We're just gonna use the agent, installing all the dependencies right now. Let's go through the steps of doing Google Auth. So we're going to create a new project. We're going to call this Gmail MCP. So we're going to go to API and services, go to library, Gmail. Enable the Gmail API, press enable. Great. Now what we're going to do is configure the consent screen. Started Gmail MCP. This is just for yourself, right? So you can keep it internal. Next, give your own contact information. Doesn't really matter. You're not sharing this with anybody else. Okay, so let's go back now to API and services. Go to credentials, create credentials. I want to do a OAuth client ID. I'm going to call this a desktop app. Press create. It's going to give us our OAuth client created screen with a client ID and client secret. This will be blurred out to you. And what we're going to do is download our JSON file. And then we're going to rename that file to GCP OAuth keys.json. Okay, so now we're going to take that file we downloaded and renamed and just place it in here. So we just placed that file we downloaded into the root directory. Okay, we're going to do local authentication. And because we're running this locally, we can just run the auth method here. We're going to give it permission see what we call the Gmail MCP. Allow. Okay, so now the last thing we have to do is add this MCP server, which we're hosting locally, to our cloud desktop config file. First, we have to make sure we get the right path. So let's find the index. And now we're in VS Code. We are going to add a comma here. So first, we're going to paste this in. And then we're going to replace the path. Now let's save this to open Cloud Desktop back up. And if we have more than 109 tools, which we do, 122 tools. That's crazy. So before we even test this out, we already saw how this Gmail integration works. I'm going to disconnect it. I'm also disconnecting Google Calendar. I didn't find them very useful, so let's disconnect them. Great. So it's very important for me to stress right here that I'm showing you how to install other people's MCP servers locally on your computer. And this process is pretty thorough, but there are plenty of room for errors. And just like we saw in the Claude's official Gmail integration, it had very limited tools. It couldn't do a lot of things. And that's for a reason. That's to make sure you don't mess things up to make sure you can't say, hey, Claude, you deleted all my emails. Now, this MCP server we're setting up can send and can delete emails. I'm willing to take that risk, but I just want to make sure I'm telling you right now, it's going to be fine, but it is risky. So let's just try it out. Can you send an email to jaredblumenfeld at gmail.com saying, hey, bro, what's up? And let's see if this works. And this video is sponsored by Aqua Voice. That is what I've been using to dictate to my computer, to Claude, to Cursor, and it's been very useful for me over the last few days since I broke my hand. So thank you, Aqua Voice, for sponsoring this video. I'll drop a link to Aqua Voice in the description below. Okay, so it's calling the draft email tool. We'll allow it. Okay, I like this. It says it's been saved as a draft. Would you like me to send this email now? Let's just go for it. Send it. Okay, run, send email from Gmail, allow, open my phone, and there we go. Hey bro, what's up? So just to recap, we looked at the new official Gmail and Google Calendar integration that was added to Cloud Desktop. I found it subpar. So what we ended up doing was looking at a few community-made Gmail MCP servers, vetting them with my MCP v3 evaluator, which is just a cloud project with a bunch of system instructions that uses different MCP servers. Look for any prompt injections, look for any malicious code or shady API calls and a few other things. Once we saw that it looked good, we cloned it. The reason we're doing that is one of the risks that we learned about with potential tool poisoning attacks is that these MCP servers that are hosted in repositories elsewhere get updated. And if someone wanted to maliciously change a few lines of code and then post that version to a repository, you would download it unknowingly. You could potentially get a malicious version of the MP MCP server, which by the way, you thought was good before. So to avoid all this, we downloaded it locally. 
We authenticate it locally and we're running it in Claude Desktop. There's always a risk involved when using open source code, especially when you connect it to LLMs, especially when you connect it to services that have access to your email, to your calendar, to your financial services. There's always a risk. You have to do a risk assessment yourself. You can also create your own MCP servers, which I've done another video and I'll link to that below. But sometimes it's just easier to take someone else's, check it out, modify it yourself, host it locally, and then run it. So that's what we did in this video. So I hope you found this video interesting. If you have any questions or feedback, drop it in the comments below. If you haven't done it yet, please subscribe to the channel. It really helps me grow. Thank you for watching and have a great day.